Hey, hello. So I'm Nino. This is Joint Paul with Anki and Andu. And uh, now if we have 
a good way to uh, submit security deposits to uh, a cryptocurrency that uh, take into account these uh, hash commitments and do some fair exchange such that if it, a party is dishonest, then uh, if we lose the security deposit, then we will get secure uh, fair computation with penalties. So, uh, so this slide uh, basically tells the entire story of uh, this project. So if you plan to take a nap, don't do it now. So, uh, okay, so uh, this will show how to do secure, fair secure function evaluation that is instantaneous. That you can do it many, many times without interaction with the blockchain. Okay? So we have this, what we call a stateful contract. In the beginning, there are n parties. They are going to submit a, a security deposit of Q times n minus 1 coins each. Uh, Q should be regarded as the compensation amount that an honest party is going to get uh, if he didn't learn the output. Uh, and be regarded as upper bound on the value of the output. Okay, so after all of them uh, submit the, the coins into the contract, um, they register their public key identity in the contract. In the contract, now they can start to run off-chain uh, uh, secure function valuation uh, that uh, delivers those kind of additive secret shares and uh, hash commitments to these secret shares. Uh, when the, those outputs are delivered, then they are going to extend signature on this tuple that they put in bold. The tablet has all the hash commitments and the index of the current execution. So let's say execution 1, 2, 3, 4 went OK. They, they, they exchange the commitment, and then they reveal the share, and everybody was happy. And execution number i equal 5. Uh, they exchange all of these uh, signed uh, signature on this tuple, and uh, then they started to reveal the commitment. But let's say one party was malicious and didn't, didn't reveal it. So in the logic of this uh, contract, uh, let's say that party number one revealed the, the, his share, but uh, other parties did not. So he has the ability to do an accusation to say, I revealed my share. So I have a signature from all the other parties on this couple of, let's say, I, I equal five. And I have uh, my three image, my share that I'm also revealing. So now there is a waiting period after I do the accusation. And if all the other parties don't want to lose money, then they will need to reveal their share, their pre-image with the signature to the, with this uh, signed tuple to, to, uh, to the contract. And then the output becomes known because all the parties are going to reveal the shares. And if some of the parties don't want to reveal the shares, they want to learn the output they not reveal the shares, they are going to lose the security deposit. So let's say that one party is malicious and everybody else is honest. So the, let's say the last one is malicious. So uh, after the waiting period, we give Q a uh, coin compensation to each of the honest parties. So this is the guarantee that we wanted. So this is optimal. You can, uh, uh, everything here is optimal. Everything is constant round. And the security deposit is the minimum that you can hope for. So this is basically how it works. The important thing to say about it is that this is a public blockchain. So uh, if uh, I'm trying to do an accusation, let's say that I'm dishonest and I'm doing an accusation against another party who is honest, then he will have in the waiting period enough time to react and uh, he will reveal what he should reveal and uh, he will not lose money. Uh, so this, because of because the, the blockchain is public, uh, if the waiting period parameter is large enough, then everything here will be secure. Um, yeah, and uh, the other thing to say about this is that, um, okay, um, sure. I think this was clear enough. Uh, yeah, but basically this tells the story of uh, how to get this kind of instantaneous off-chain computation. Okay. Um, okay, so this was done using a, a stateful contract, meaning that uh, you do this accusation, then you move into this uh, waiting period uh, 
stage and then you will either go back or you go into this uh, claim stage in the end where you need to give all the compensations. Uh, and the, for example, we have an implementation of this in Ethereum, which is using this kind of stateful contract. There is a question whether you can do the same thing in Bitcoin. And actually the answer is kind of yes for this specific contract. So if you have Bitcoin plus covenant, plus relative lock time, then you can do pretty much the same thing. Bitcoin currently has the, the relative lock time, but doesn't have the covenant yet. Uh, it's implemented, but uh, not used yet. Uh, so covenants mean that, so, so vanilla Bitcoin is, uh, let's say Alice has some coins, so Alice is the identity that controls the coins. So if she's uh, signing with her secret key, she can spend the coins to wherever. And with covenants, it says that there is also restriction on where Alice can send the coins to. So uh, this is planned uh, on the old map of Bitcoin to this also, and you could do, it will not give you pocket, it will give you secure function valuation, and we'll talk about pocket soon. Um, okay, in the state, the stateful model is the, basically the way that it works, the money in the contract can be spent according to what is uh, defined by the current state. So there are rules, uh, uh, predefined rules about how the money can be spent according to what is written in the current state. And there are also rules about how you can change the current state. So this is a more powerful model. Uh, and it's not surprising, let me show in the next slide, that uh, this is a more powerful model. And take some completely unrelated example from crypto 2014 about uh, stateful encryption against the algorithm, algorithm substitution attack with mass surveillance. So if you have a stateful encryption instead of stateless encryption, you can do, you can achieve more. So this is not surprising in general, that uh, it's stateful. And by the way, the stateless uh, version, stateless model is, has advantages. It is more efficient and actually the Ethereum guys are talking about uh, in some stateless version of the transaction for better scalability. Uh, not so clear cut. Uh, so this is the clean example that we have about what you can do in the stateful model that is the, uh, cannot, cannot really do in the stateless model. So this is a lottery. Uh, so there is a, it's like a tournament bracket and the, each two players play and the winner go to the next round. So if it is the stateful model, you can put in the state here who won and continue to the next round. And this is a very efficient protocol. If you try to do it in the stateless model, and you cannot write after each competition who is the winner, and you just need some way to decide the winner, uh, I will not be able to convince you in a couple of minutes, but uh, basically you get some exponential blow up when you try to do it in the, in the stateless model. In the stateful model is linear, it's very, very efficient. Uh, so we have a paper about this. Uh, we call it the zero collateral. Let lottery in uh, Bitcoin UK. Okay, so now let's go to the, to the active part or the poker part. Okay, so in general, in the classical setting, uh, um, <coughs> the question of whether a skew function evaluation and multiple computation are equivalent or not. So basically, if you have a skew function evaluation and you ask if it's feasible to implement from this. Uh, Secure multiparty computation. So basically, the way that you would do it, uh, you want to implement the multiparty computation. So you use the secure function of evaluation for the for the round, and in the end of the round, uh, uh, you, uh, you secret share the state in the end of the round, and then you continue to the next round. And uh, if you had an honest majority, then the majority can re always reconstruct the, the state and continue. So if you have honest majority, it works. If you don't have an honest majority, then even secure function evaluation is not secure. Um, it's not fair. Uh, there is actually a separation result. This is the best of both, both worlds paper that says that uh, there are, for some parameters, if you, so best of both worlds means that if there is honest majority, then you get fairness, but you always get privacy, even if there is no honest majority. This is difficult really to achieve. This paper is mostly negative. Um, but there is a separation result about uh, what you can achieve with, for some parameters, you can achieve safe uh, secure function evaluation, but, but not secure multiparticle. 
computation. Anyway, all of this is irrelevant for us because what we really want is to play poker and we want to do it with a dishonest majority. We want that even if one party is honest and everybody else is dishonest, then you cannot damage the honest party. So uh, the privacy is always ma maintained uh, of the parties and we have guaranteed output delivery at the end of each round. So after each round of the computation ends, uh, all the parties are guaranteed to get the output of the round. And the last bullet points that is uh, highlighted says that even this is not enough, what we really want is to force the parties to play the next round. Because the example here, let's say, uh, the, the last round finished and Alice received some cards, say the, the Queen of Spades, and maybe she doesn't like the card, so we shouldn't allow Alice just to abort now after the round ends. We must force Alice to continue to play or otherwise pay a penalty. This is what we want in a, we call it a dropout tolerant uh, secure multi-party computation with penalties. Okay, so in earlier work we we had a very complex uh, way to achieve this, to force parties to play in the stateless model, model in the Bitcoin model, with a CISO construction that is quadratic round on, on the cryptocurrency on the blockchain. You uh, shouldn't really look at this slide. So in the stateful model, uh, which is what we do in the, this uh, project, it becomes much easier, uh, but still, not as good as the version that I, uh, I showed before for the secure function valuation. So the, the distinction is that uh, for the reactive uh, computation, you really need to put logic of the functionality that you are computing into the contract, into the on-chain contract uh, that is being verified by all the nodes in the cryptocurrency network. Uh, because uh, like in, in the previous version, the secure function valuation, just after, so each next uh, iteration, each uh, execution of a uh, uh, secure function valuation, it's like, uh, it's always the same. It's just a signed agreement that some data that the parties agreed to sign was really signed. <coughs> Here you cannot, you cannot do it because uh, Alice and Bob are playing poker and they need to decide now is one of them aborted or not? So may, maybe one is accusing the other and the other is accusing the first one. And you really need to put the logic of the pocket game on the blockchain to, to decide who is right and who is wrong. Otherwise, it will not work. You can uh, become convinced uh, what way. Actually, so I put in the last bullet uh, an interesting open question of, for a reactive functionality, whether you can uh, make the on-chain complexity of it depend only on the security parameter, like we can for the secure function evaluation, or it must depend on the complexity of the functionality itself. So this is an interesting open question. Okay. So this is basically uh, what is true about uh, how to implement uh, reactive functionalities uh, with uh, penalties and uh, with money transfers. So now I'm going to talk about the uh, problem with the practical deployment of this. So the first two problems are not so bad. So the first one is the actual uh, mental poker protocol. What is the time complexity for the initial shuffle? So I put some screenshot uh, from the best paper that does it. You have nine players who are playing poker. <laughs> See numbers like 11 seconds and 15 seconds. So uh, question whether this is good enough user experience, maybe this can be optimized, so uh, it's, not a big, it's not a big deal. The other one is about the on-chain complexity, like if you need to execute the poker logic on the blockchain, uh, you need to pay high fees, or, so this is also not a, a big deal. In Ethereum, there is already support for this uh, built-in opcode for uh, the elliptic chair of uh, modular exponentiations, which is what we need for the zero knowledge, proof of knowledge for the poker logic. But the third point is a big deal, like it's basically a deal breaker. So uh, unless anybody has a guess, I'm going to say why the entire thing breaks apart and we cannot really implement mental poker, or we can, but not really. So what the people who actually play poker online really want <coughs> is that if 
some player a board, then the other players can continue to play the game. Uh, and this, unfortunately, is uh, there is an inherent con contradiction here. So let me uh, try to say quickly. So let's say Alice, Bob, and Carol uh, start to play poker. Uh, you give it a private card to Alice, a private card to Bob, and then Carol a box. So this is the good case. Here we, we, would, we are happy because we can now uh, reshuffle the card using the, the secret, but not using the, the private card of Alice and Bob, reshuffle the card and let Alice and Bob continue to play. This can be done. It's theoretically it's not easy, but it can be done. But let's do, now talk about the other case. Uh, Alice, Bob, and Carol start to play a poker game, we give a private card to Alice, private card to Bob, private card to Carol, and now Carol are both. So, the only thing that you can do is take, basically reshuffle the cards of, with Alice and Bob by putting the card of Carol back into the deck of cards and reshuffling everything together. You cannot leave the card out. Because if you leave the card out and uh, you reshuffle only using Alice and Bob, uh, so Alice and Bob has to total control and they can just deal all the cards to themselves and they would know what is the missing card of Carol. So this will uh, violate zero knowledge. So we cannot really uh, reshuffle the cards if a player votes and this is a big deal for people who implement this in practice uh, for the pure crypto version of poker. So, an alternative design is uh, using a trusted hardware to implement poker. Uh, and this will solve all the problems of the previous slide. So the shuffle becomes very fast, millisecond. Uh, all the logic doesn't need to be on the blockchain. You can move all the, uh, all the logic into a secure enclave and uh, just uh, on the blockchain you just need to get uh, to verify signature from this uh, magical trusted party of the trusted hardware. And the third point which is the most important is that this party has all the secrets and uh, if one party abhors, then the, this magical trusted party can continue to give cards and give, continue the game with the other parties. So uh, this version has advantages. So actually, uh, so uh, we teamed up with some of the guys who are implementing poker on Ethereum. Uh, so, um, and what we agreed to do with them is to implement both the pure crypto version and the trusted hardware version, and we will see what people would like to play more. Uh, so probably not the pure. So for the pure uh, crypto version, what it would mean that if, let's say, one party aborts, what we can enforce that uh, this party who aborted is going to compensate the other parties. So they will get extra money. But it's not the nicest kind of uh, user experience, like what I said before. People who play right now on centralized poker web uh, sites, they really want to continue the game. Like, uh, this is like the fun of the experience. So this we cannot really achieve with the pure crypto version, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so we will implement the uh, both versions. So this is a project with uh, Andrew and Fen is also good with the trusted hardware. Uh, so this will be a good uh, use case for smart contracts. That is general question like in the last couple of years, what are like the killer applications for smart contracts? So poker is one of them. I'm not sure if you have other good examples. So uh, we're going to work with these guys and uh, implement these uh, poker versions. Okay, cool. So they, they will have like a crowd play sometime soon. So if you want, you can invest in that. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, three questions. Uh, can you tell me which one of the computer protocol are you using in the inner world? Because you, are, it looks like you, are, you need to use uh, active pure computer protocol. Uh, yes, it needs to be active. Yeah. Uh, which protocol are you using? The one by uh, we, uh, from 2014. This is uh, about twice more efficient. So this is a shuffling protocol by Jan Gross. Uh, uh, that is already pretty good, but the one by uh, we so I put it, uh, so I only have uh, it. So, uh, oh, I say, yeah. Thank you. It's, uh, it's 
the, the fastest uh, protocol. One more question. Uh, so if one party abhors in the pure crypto version, is it possible that there's they could switch to some default strategy so it continues to play, but uh, like the aborted player plays some kind of uh, you know nonsense? So so what I said before that. Uh, what you can achieve, and there are actually academic talks about reshuffling the cards, but they always say, we will take the, the card of the party that aborted, put it back in the deck, and then reshuffle. So this is not exactly the same as real poker, because if it was a bad card, it's supposed to stay on the table. You're not supposed to put it back into the deck. So this you can, if, if this was your question, you can reshuffle by, by putting the card back into the deck. Did you mean something else? No, I, I meant that it would still kind of have like an algorithm to execute uh, the, um, like the player would like continue playing that it won't be reshuffled, they will still have the, the card but it will have some kind of a default strategy. Default strategy, okay, I see. So this is kind of the same as the... Uh, so what we... Okay, it's an interesting idea, but so what, what we do in this the way that we do it is we just penalize the player. Um, it's kind of, the, the incentives of what you're saying are a little weird because there are also all these the poker bots that are, might be better than humans, so we actually maybe rewarding a player who acted maliciously. <coughs> so he might win the game. So I mean, I'm not sure what kind of simulation, how, how good is, is he going to play? That, that depends, but then you said one problem is that uh, the people are unhappy if someone they want to continue play, right? When someone aborts, so in this case they can continue uh, playing. Yeah, but they want to play with humans. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the surprise. How do you tell if it's a human or not? <laughs> yeah, it's like I said, there's there, there something a little weird about the incentives here because you might be rewarding the malicious player. So this is like a game with money, right? So uh, this, this aborting party actually might win money from the honest party. If everybody knows that that is the way that it works, they might not like your suggestion. Okay, okay so maybe we can continue offline. Uh, so thank you, Ido. Uh, that's the end of the session. And, uh,